Hey everybody, I am back. Uh, Mrs. Mommy Penny Talks has been missing for a few weeks. Uh, I think I the last episode went out in September. Um, I've taken a bit of a break but I'm back and I wanted to do a bit of an intro to Mrs. Mommy Penny Talks for the beginning of January. A bit of a motivational session for this first day of lockdown you're all maybe homeschooling your children or stressing out a little bit at home so I thought I'd come on and do a little 15 minutes motivational talk of um, me Mrs Mummy Penny and what to expect from my podcast uh, for the next few weeks months years uh, so Mrs Mummy Penny Talks um, I publish it every Tuesday and I'm on to series three now, so this is episode of series three. And um, I get interesting people on my podcast to talk about money, their lives, their business, how they've got to where they've got to, what challenges they faced, um, and what they've learned from a financial point of view, particularly with building that business. So I've got some really exciting guests coming up over the next few weeks, um, all in the diary. Um, yet to be recorded. So I've got um, Faith uh, from Much More With The Less coming on next week and we're going to be talking about what we think is going to happen this year uh, for personal finance and what we think um, people out there are going to need help with and we're going to have a great conversation about all of that and talk about um, some of the things that we've learnt from the past 10 months being in lockdown and how that's helped our finances or hindered our finances. Um, I've also got Jordan Cox coming on, um, who's just launched his own new podcast. So we're going to be talking about um, his business because he's been um, running his website for a year now. So it would be interesting to find out how he's found the first year of being in business and what he's planning for this year. Um, Holly from Thrifty Mum is coming on. Um, and then my wonderful friend Becky, Becky, Rebecca, Megson Smith. Um, I've grew up with her so she'll always be back to me and um, is coming on to talk about her business Ridley Writes where she um, is a writing coach and she actually helped me write my book which I'm going to plug this all the way through this um, live and this podcast my book is now $12.99 um, I knocked a couple of quid off the price um, for January um, it's a great time to buy the book it's the same price on Amazon as well actually but if you buy it from my website you get a signed copy um, so yes links bottom of my um, Facebook live and I will pop it in the notes to the podcast and on YouTube. So yeah, what am I going to talk to you about today? So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time talking about my sort of rituals for um, January for my finances because I don't know about you but I, I sort of lost the plot a little bit in the last couple of months. I didn't pay too much attention to my spending and um, it has got a little bit out of control let's let's go to the extreme um, and the way to get back in control with my spending and my finances is to track everything I spend so I'm starting I started a spending diary from um, officially it started from yesterday because I'm gonna start um, weekly summaries of it on my blog and my Monday money post and um, so yeah that's tracking absolutely everything that you spend so any cash transactions, not likely to be many of them at the moment, um, anything you spend from your current account, any credit cards, anything that goes through PayPal, um, your regular bills that go through, everything that you spend money on goes into that spending diary. And it's a really great way of building up a profile so that you can then form a budget Give it like a few weeks with your spending diary, then create your budget at the end of that. Now your budget um, will then be based on reality, not just uh, sort of numbers that you're plucking out of the air. Now your budget, you're going to want to um, use it to save some money. So absolutely, you use your reality and, and you know shave a little bit off. But there's there's almost no point in if you know that you're spending three hundred pounds a month on your groceries. There's no point setting your budget at a hundred pounds because that's you know too much of a drastic reduction. So maybe you'd set your budget at two hundred and fifty pounds or two hundred and twenty pounds to cut a little bit out of your budget. But yeah, um, and the other thing that's really great about a spending diary is it allows you to um, understand. Um, any sort of emotional reactions um, that, that might result in spending. So um, 
if you've if you've had a bit of a um, day where you felt sad or you felt um, angry, have you gone out and spent some money on an online transaction? Um, I certainly noticed this when I've done spending diaries before that whenever there's any sort of maybe like a day of extreme boredom, um, a day where I haven't gone out to do any exercise, then there might be a spending transaction that happens. Normally with me, it's um, in my local co-op and it's on some rubbish food. So that's definitely something that I need to watch out for. But yes, it's worth doing to so keep that spending diary. Um, I um, keep it in a notebook or do it online, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm on a spreadsheet. Um, I keep notes on my things I spend on a daily basis in my um, daily planner. And then I summarise it all at the end of the week. And I, I put it all into categories of whether it's been groceries or fun money or monthly bills or savings. It all goes into there. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be writing. It's going to be a form big part of my Monday Money Post, which are very popular on my blog, which go out every Monday, normally lunchtime, uh, talking about where I spent my money and um, how I've saved and some of the decisions I've made. So, yeah, that's my spending diary. And um, it's a great time to, so you're going to come up with your budget and then that's going to allow you to come up with some goals for the year. Now, I know it's, it's, a, it's a tricky time of the year, isn't it? We've just got into lockdown and we don't really know what's going to happen. We don't know how long we're going to be in lockdown for. But you've got some experience from last year. So you, you'll know if um, it cost you more money and you'll know if you saved some money from it. There are people in different camps. You've got the people that are carrying on working, who have got their regular salary coming in by spending less money because we can't go out and do anything. But then you've got people who um, have been furloughed and are losing a chunk of their salary. Um, and then you've got this unfortunate um, people I really feel for and I mention as much as I possibly can. You've got a huge chunk of people in the UK, three million people, who um, has income has stopped and they can't get any form of support from the government. Um, the um, excluded excluded UK community and um, it's, it's a really really challenging time so setting some goals be that on making some extra money saving some extra money um, trying some new things to create some extra money then it's a really great time to just sort of sit down and think about what you might want to do this year with your finances um, personally for me, um, I've been, I've been thinking about this quite a lot this morning because I just did um, a little bit of work on it. Um, last year I, I did really well um, putting a nice chunk of money into my pension so I want to carry on doing that. I've changed my mindset with my pension. Um, in the past I've always felt quite scared about putting money into it because once money goes into your pension it's gone. Um, it's gone until you can access your pension money and for me, that is uh, 58. Yes, from the year 2028, um, you will you be 58. You have to be 58 before you can access your private pension money. That is your private pension money you're investing, not any state pension money. And so it is 58 is ooh, 14. I'm nearly 44. So it's only 14 years away. It's not that far away. And the great thing about putting money into my pension is um, it means that it, it, I can invest it from my company. Um, I can move it from my company, which um, it then becomes a company expense and saves me on some tax. So that's a really good idea. And it's money I'm going to need in the not too distant future. It's money that's being invested in the market. So, you know, over a long period of time, it would go up and down, but hopefully go up over time. Obviously, there's no guarantee there. Money can go up and down. Um, but yeah, I really want to prioritise putting more money into my pension. Um, my goal last year was to put in £500 a month. And I'd got to my goal by the beginning of December. But then I got a little bit of extra money at the end of December. So I put um, an extra £5,000 into my pension. So I did really well last year and I want to carry on with that this year. Um, the other thing I've got is, um, so I've got a PCP car loan, which was taken out in March of 2018. So I've reached the end, oh, computer, don't switch off, there we go. Um, I've reached the end of that um, 
loan deal in September of 2021. Is that right? 18, 19, 20, 21. I think, yes, yes, it, I bought it in 2017. So um, I've reached the end of the, um, the car deal. So what happens with the PCP loan is you pay an amount each month, but then at the end of it, you can either like give the car back to the car company and you get a new one from them and your loan payments carry on, or um, you can pay off the car in full. And what I actually want to do, because the car's only going to be three years old and I'm not a big car person, I'm just going to keep the car, pay off the balance of the loan. Um, and that's going to be about £10,000. So my intention is to pay that off in full this year. And that would mean that um, the only debt I'm actually left with is my mortgage, uh, which is a pretty incredible feeling. So I had no credit card debt um, for nearly two years. And then getting rid of that car loan will be really positive. So yeah, really want to do that. And the other thing that has to happen while all this goes on is maintaining my emergency funds. So I have six months worth of um, essential expenses saved in an emergency fund, um, which is just sitting in immediate access cash. Um, and I want to maintain that balance. So if I need to take from it this year, because, you know, inevitably emergencies happen, if I want to take from it, then um, any money that's taken needs to be replaced. So I've got some quite big goals there that are quite reliant on my business and performing at least as well as it did last year, um, if not better. Um, I would also like to put money into my stocks and shares ISA and last but not least, although I never seem to get to it as I'd quite like to put some extra money into my mortgage, but um, I personally, I prioritize, I'm going to prioritise paying off that car loan and putting money into my pension and keeping my emergency fund topped up than paying money off my mortgage because it's a really, really low mortgage rate. Um, and I'm not going to be living in this house forever. And I sort of see, I've got a really big mortgage and I would like to reduce the value of that mortgage. But um, hopefully one day I'll move to a smaller house that costs less money and I can get rid of the mortgage that way rather than paying off big chunks now when the interest rates are low. So yeah, so there's some of my goals. So have a think about some of the things that you might like to do this year um, and be make it ambitious, You know, make it um, something that's going to really make a difference to your life like saving, paying off those debts, saving a chunk of money, something that will just really make a difference and make you um, feel like you've achieved something at the end of the year. Um, so if you want any kind of detailed financial guidance, um, my book is a great read, The Money Guide to Transform Your Life. Uh, it's split into two parts. So you've got part one where it's talking about the now, where um, I'm talking about things like budgeting, saving on monthly costs, a bit about making extra money, food money saving, family money saving, and there's a big section about debt repayment as well, having been having been something that I've gone through myself painfully. Um, I paid off £16,000. Uh, that was all paid off by April of... Not last year, the year before. Yes, yeah, so I'm nearly two years debt-free. Um, and then the uh, second part of the book is about the future. So it's talking about things like investments, pensions, um, and then um, like insurance protection and wills. Um, and also there's a, there's a lovely chapter to end it, um, which is all about do what you love. Um, trying to get into um, a job or a career where you um, love what you do and wake up every day joyful about what you're going to be doing that day, like I do homeschooling most of today um with with little bits of work thrown in when i can um so yeah that's uh mrs mommy penny talks for the first uh for the first week of 2021 i hope that you're okay and um lockdown is as it can be what else can i say we're back in lockdown and I will see you every week, either listen to the podcast or it goes on YouTube as well. And when it's an interview, um, I record it on Zoom and it's a pre-recorded rather than a live like this one has been. But yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.